Orders of the day. Ballot item number 20, private member's notice of motion number 108, Mr. Hatfield. Pleased to recognize the member for Windsor Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. I move that, in the opinion of this House, the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario should ensure that its current review of charitable gaming regulations includes consideration of the need for Royal Canadian Legion branches and service clubs to raise funds to maintain their social and financial vitality by using local 50-50 and progressive draws. Mr. Hatfield has moved private members' notice of motion number 108. Pursuant to Standing Order 101, the member has 12 minutes for his presentation. I recognize Mr. Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. I don't know if a motion such as this has ever been debated in the legislature before. It doesn't seek to change legislation. It merely calls on us to show our support for Ontario's legions and other charitable organizations. The AGCO sets the rules and regulations on games of chance in Ontario. More than a year ago, there was a crackdown and the legions and other not-for-profit charity clubs and organizations were told they could no longer hold a member's draw or a weekly draw uh, you know, one was a daily, with the weeklies are loony and toony draws, and these draws were incentives to encourage members to come to the club, maybe sign the book for the draws and drop some change into the jar for a chance at the pot. A lot of Legion members are seniors or retirees who aren't as socially active as they used to be. Coming to the club gives them a chance to spend time with friends and neighbours, maybe play a game of dart, shuffleboard or euchre, and perhaps have a social drink. When you look at the numbers, nearly 400 Legion branches, nearly 100,000 members in Ontario, you, you get a better idea of the scope of the problem. The average age of the men and women who served their country during the Second World War is 94. For Korea vets, it's 87. But many of our Legions today are home to those who served with UN peacekeeping missions in the Balkans and faraway places such as Somalia and Rwanda. Don't forget, over a 12-year period, we had 40,000 Canadian military personnel in Afghanistan. The purpose of the Royal Canadian Legion is to serve our veterans so their service and sacrifice will never be forgotten. Legions provide a safe place, a welcoming home, and as with any home, there are costs in keeping the doors open. The insurance paid up, heat and lights on, or air conditioning, that's when the daily and loony and toony draws comes in. Municipal licensing and bylaw officers were made aware that AGCO regulations didn't specify that progressive draws were permitted, and so there was a province-wide crackdown. It has caused great financial distress for legions and other such charitable organizations. Our legions raised tens of thousands of dollars for a variety of worthy causes. To remain viable, especially post-COVID, mm -hmm. They need people, members, and visitors to drop in and spend a few dollars. At my branch, 255 in Riverside, President Ken Dalt says the members sparked, or the draws sparked optimism, motivated members, especially seniors, to get out of the house, come to the branch to sign the book, and maybe stay for a meal or a beverage or a bit of fun. Stephen Guy from Branch 64 in Nepean writes about losing their draws in the crackdown. It was a, disappointing, a disappointment for all of our members, and they appreciated having a chance to win a prize, but also interact with others when they came in to sign the book. Toronto Branch 22, uh, President Brenda Heath says, I can tell you, it not only has restricted our abilities to raise much needed funding for the branch itself, but our ability to assist members of our community and has negatively impacted Legion membership. Here's another good one from Bob Thomas from Branch 551 in Waterdown on the value his, legions has, his legion has within his community. We actively support youth, scouts, venturers, guides, brownies, cubs, army and air force cadets. We run poster and essay contests each November from spring to fall. Our front parking lot becomes a farmer's market at no cost to the community. On Sunday mornings, our legion becomes a church. And Speaker, Bob ends by making this myth-busting point. We're not a bunch of old soldiers sitting around drinking beer. We are an integral part of our community. Look, this isn't rocket science. Daily loony and tweed draws didn't hurt anyone. 
They didn't take any kind of a concerning bite out of the AGCO's profits from scratch tickets or Lotto Max and 649 draws, but they certainly helped our legions and other charitable clubs viable, helped them remain viable. Most of all of us here in this legislature have at least one legions in the riding. I have four and another one just outside uh, my riding, just a few blocks to the west of me. My father served in World War II and later was a career soldier, once serving as a peacekeeper on the Gaza Strip. He was a proud member of the Royal Canadian Legion and served in various executive positions, including Sergeant at Arms. My mother, who at 96 and a half is still alive and kicking, is a past president of the Ladies Auxiliary at Branch 29, Salt Pond, Bureau, Newfoundland. I grew up on Army bases in Manitoba, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Newfoundland. I was in the Army and Air Force cadets and served in the militia in New Brunswick. I've been a Legion member for more than 30 years. My brother Barry in Ottawa retired from the Air Force as a Chief Warrant Officer and is also a proud Legion member. I've been out there every year with my poppy box. I value our veterans. I thank our veterans for their service. I want them to know that we in this House value their contributions. I want our Legion branches to know we're doing our part to support them because we know they are hurting right now. And I want the AGCO to know our legions need their progressive draws and they need AGCO's help now more than ever. I applaud the government for expanding the support for younger veterans. And they'll get that now because they're receiving new aid from the Soldiers Aid Commission. I applaud them for their plan to create a new monument here at Queen's Park for veterans of the war in Afghanistan. I applaud them for saying if any legion was still paying property tax, they would no longer have to do so. <clears throat> I hope they follow through with a proposal to create a Silver Cross license plate, as has been done in other provinces with the full support of the military. And that's for the immediate family speaker of those who lost their lives and paid the supreme sacrifice in recent military conflicts. This is early October. Next month, we'll all be attending Remembrance Day ceremonies back in our home ridings. I'll be there wearing an old pair of my father's shoes, Speaker. I wear a pair of dead man's shoes on Remembrance Day to honor my father and the friends and comrades with whom he served. Wouldn't it be great if this motion passes this evening and we send a letter to the AGCO and we hear back from them before Remembrance Day telling us they agree and will be making the changes we're suggesting on behalf of veterans. That way our vets and our legion branches know the AGCO was on their side as are each and every one of us here in Ontario's provincial parliament. Speaker, I want to thank our member from St. Catharines, Jenny Stevens. Not only is she a long serving member of her legion branch, but she's the lead spokesperson within the NDP caucus for veterans, legions and military affairs. Ms. Stevens has a son currently serving in the Royal Canadian Navy as a Petty Officer First Class, and we speak of him often here in the House. He's 37 years old. We know the average age these days of someone leaving the armed forces is 39. If today's veterans are going to have a safe and welcoming legion to come home to, we need to do our part in helping keep those doors open. Speaker, the Americans used to have a big poster proclaiming Uncle Sam needs you. Well, today here in Ontario, our legions and our Knights of Columbus halls, our sports clubs need us. I'm a proud member of Riverside Sportsman's Club. We used to run the weekly draws there, and our members look after a huge number of charities as well. We need the progressive draws back. We're asking the AGCO to hear our pleas and to work it out with our municipal licensing and bylaw people who do a great job, by the way, but they follow the rules and regulations as set by the AGCO. A couple of weeks ago, when we were discussing the merits of expanding the Soldiers' Aid Commission Act, we heard again the sad story of Philip Kitchen, an Afghan vet. He fell on hard times, had PTSD, ended up with his wife and a young family living in a tent. We also hear, according to the experts who study those things, here in Toronto, 13% of the people living on the street are homeless people, are ex-military personnel. Speaker, we're failing our veterans in little ways and dribs and drabs and eventually the little things become the larger issues that demand action. To the AGCO, progressive draws at Legion Halls and sports clubs are where the Knights of Columbus gather 
maybe a little thing, but it's leaving a major hole in the sustainability of so many organizations. We can't afford to allow red tape to handcuff a reasonable solution. I recall the words of the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services who was speaking on the need to update the Soldiers Aid Commission Act. Through the mud of Flanders, he said, the waves of the North Atlantic, the beaches of Normandy, the skies over occupied Europe and the tough fighting in Korea, our veterans preserved our freedom. In later years, the more modern theaters of conflict, such as the UN peacekeeping missions in the Balkans, Rwanda, Somalia, and elsewhere, and of course, the war in Afghanistan, our veterans continue to serve and continue to distinguish themselves. Speaker, the minister pointed out to the House that today's veterans don't necessarily fit the image that many, have as many of us have if we're asked to visualize a veteran in our mind's eye. He said it could be a 30-year-old single mom or a young man entering university or college, younger than most of us here in the House. Speaker legions need to recruit younger members in order to keep doing what they do to honor our veterans, and that's a challenge in some areas, but they also need our help in small ways. <clears throat> this motion may be seen by some as a small step, but I won't argue that, but it's a crucial step. The AGCO has a lottery license policy manual, which sets out the types of charitable lottery schemes for which a license may be issued. The AGCO has been working to modernize charitable gaming and is committed to helping grow and sustain a healthy gaming sector in Ontario. They're on record as saying they want to ensure that games of chance are offered with honesty, integrity, and the public interest. The AGCO told me they'll take into account the feedback from industry stakeholders. Well, I'm asking all members of the House to give their feedback to the AGCO to let them know we support the legalization of daily loony and toonie draws at Allegiant Halls and other charitable organizations which used to hold them before they were told to stop. We see it in the public interest. Our legion halls are public gathering and meeting places. We need them to stay open, the available to the public, and the progressive draws have always helped them pay the bills. COVID has had many such facilities hanging on by the financial fingertips. Let's do our part. Let's look after the little things that mean so much to our veterans and those who support them and wish to continue to do so. I say to the AGCO, visit a few legion halls, ask around and see how they're doing and ask how much more could they do if they could get back to offering progressive draws for their members. There must be a way for this to happen. There has to be a simple solution. The draws were held for years without complaint. Cut the red tape, give the legions a break and help them stay viable so they can continue to support Canada's military personnel, veterans and their families. Simply put, we need our legions today more than ever. Speaker, they need to stay open. Cut the red tape, pass this motion, send a letter to the AGCO, tell them how we feel, and ask them to help save our Legion Halls and other not-for-profit clubs and organizations which do so much to support our communities and our local charities. Thank you for your time this afternoon.